Good evening. Welcome to this evening's TI Technology Webinar hosted by Texas Instruments. Thank you for joining us tonight, where we will look at ways to connect technology, mathematics, and art. I see that many of you are joining us for the first time, so we'd like to offer a special welcome if this is your first T-Cubed webinar. As we are saddened at the cancellation of the International Conference, these webinars can provide some of the amazing presentations that we're supposed to be there. I will be your moderator for tonight. My name is Stacey Thibodeau. I have taught science for over 20 years, including biology one and two, chemistry one and AP chemistry two. I've also taught biomedical science courses in the Project Lead the Way program. I love to use TI technology to assist me daily in teaching data collection, modeling mathematic concepts, and linking them to science content. We are joined tonight by Ms. Ellen Pikorski, or Ms. Pi, as her students call her. Ellen has taught high school math in Texas for five years and Alaska for two years. I did ask her about the weather over there tonight. She has developed several projects for her classes and uses lots of technology. Ellen has presented many of these projects in math conferences in Texas, Chicago, Maryland, and Washington. Now she teaches at Benny Benson Secondary School and shares her love of math, projects, and technology with students and teachers in Alaska. Thanks for joining us tonight, Ellen. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is going to be my first webinar, and but I've done this presentation several, several times in conferences all over the state, several states. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Do I have the screen yet, Stacy? Yes, ma'am, you can take it away. All right. All right, so there we go. Right now, I can't see any comments. So if you can, just hold off comments in for a little bit, or Stacy can shout them out to me. Um, like I said earlier, my name is Ellen Pikarski. All my students call me Miss Pi. Um, we've been. I've done this project for my goodness longer than I would like to account for but that's okay it's been a lot of fun it's this project has changed quite a bit it's become a lot more dynamic as i do this um, basically we're just transforming math functions to create artwork and kids love it um, these are some of the first projects that were done probably about four or five years ago and um, I always make a PowerPoint video and I put it on to YouTube and my students will always have their parents watch these videos and, and see their artwork. Um, as you can tell, none of these are absolutely perfect. Um, however, most of the kids that were working on these first projects were kids with IEPs, kids with tons of accommodations. Um, a lot of them were struggling in math and were in math. Their previous math teachers said they could not function. They couldn't do math, that they really um, should just be in a SPED class and get a waiver for math. And I was like, well, let me, let's try this project with them and see how they do. Um, so you can see uh, this is something that is very individualized. I love this project because I can differentiate super easily um, and the kids really are they help differentiate for themselves as well and they take ownership on this and they um, really ha giving them that power to choose and and kind of feel find their comfort level on how well they can do this math and letting them know that um, they can be as precise as they want to be or as they have time and ability to be. Um, and I'm going to fast forward this because this particular video is like, I don't know, 17 minutes long. So we're not going to see all of it. Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> there are some incredible pictures. And 
the students always, always surprise me. The ones that I think, oh, they'll never do hardly anything. They're not gonna like this. They are the ones that have so much fun with this project and they um, really just have a ball with it and they really uh, shine. They're, you know, they're able to get this done and, and they develop math skills that I thought that they, and math concepts that I would have thought they never would have understood. All right, so. I'm going to go ahead and stop this and move on. I know you guys would love for me to just stay here for the full like 12, 13, however many minutes it is long, but I do want to show you some other things. These are two projects that I am, my students just finished and I really wanted to do a shout out for these. Uh, this top one, um, well, both of them are students that are in a project based learning class and there it's an, an alternative school and these kids um, are not even in an algebra one level class okay so they really struggled a lot of them are 10th and 11th graders with hardly any uh, math credit at all because they really struggle with math and this top one is a student that actually had a heart attack in january and missed the third, pretty much all of the third quarter of class and came back the last week of the quarter and then we had COVID-19 and I haven't seen him since. And he was able to download the um, software that TI is offering. Guys, if you have not um, shared that, the links for the free software with your students, please do so, it's free. They get, what, six months to use it and um, they can really do some phenomenal things on their calculators and the software on the computers. Anyway, so yeah, this top one, the kid had a heart attack, you know, in January and he was able to do this. And, you know, before, <clears throat> before starting this project, I don't think he could have even graphed a line on his own. And now he, you know, after practicing and practicing with me, he was explaining to other students how to do the, how to graph the equations and how to transform them. It was really incredible. And then this bottom one is from a student that is the perpetual sleeper. He's super good at hiding behind other kids and um, he just tries to do as little work as he possibly can. And he just fell in love with Pikachu and just went crazy with it. And he was done with this project in like two weeks and his mom was telling me that he was staying up until like one, two o'clock in the morning working on this. So students really have a lot of fun with this project. Um, and so let me give you some of the paperwork, some of the like the rules I do I use for my students is um, this is just a the first half of a snapshot of my rubric and I give them all the rules. I tell them that they um, on what we're doing and then there's lots of different boxes with types of equations all our parent functions and and I always give them the uh, transformation values um, the a the b and the c and the d if there is a b um, so that they know you know what's going left and right what's going up and down and everything anyway and I require them to use at least one function from each box two times and when they whoops, when they fill out the paperwork, um, they have to fill out the transformation rules for at least two equations. And when my students first see this, they, they a lot of times are overwhelmed. So here's some more of the equations. I mean, I do square roots, trig functions, logarithms, uh, and even the conic equations. And yeah, exponentials, power, linear, rational. So really I cover pretty much all of the equations. I don't do polar equations. I um, haven't quite figured out how to combine the two. All right. Um, I also require them to do 30 different equations. And at the very beginning, I tell you the kids, are, they see 30 equations, their, their eyes get huge and they're like, man, this is going to be so hard. And by the time they're done, they have like 60 or 70 equations and they're bragging about how many equations they've used. And um, so it goes from like at the very beginning where they, they feel like it's a little bit way overwhelming and then they far exceed my expectations. Um, and so this is just an example of the rubrics and the grading. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. 
And the reason why is because you'll have access to all of these files on um, a Google Drive account that I have. Um, and these are just examples. All of this is in, <clears throat> excuse me, they're in Word documents, so you guys can edit it, change it, make it, make it work for you. And um, just really, I, I love this project. I love the, sorry, you can't see that yet. Um, I love the project, but I know that other people have their own way of doing things. So I want you to be able to uh, change it up to meet your needs as much as you possibly can. All right, so let's do some practice. And I'm going to see if I can pull up my chat window so I can see if there's any questions. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and ask them now, or we can uh, do a little bit of practice. Um, and when I introduce this project to my students, I pretty much do the same thing that I'm doing with you guys right now, as I, I give all of them a, the same picture, and I say, okay, this is gonna be our practice picture. We're gonna work on this together, and uh, we'll go over several different um, equations with them. <clears throat> and I use the teacher software. If you guys don't have the teacher software, talk to your district, get the teacher software. It is amazing. Um, so I, I give them all these and their calculators and I have the students, they are the ones that are driving the, um, I project their screen and I, I'll stand next to them and I'll say, okay, we'll do this together. You're going to show everybody how to do it and I'll walk you through it. And uh, we do it that way. Because we are virtual, I'm going to have to do everything. So please be patient if it takes me a while. A um, couple things I want to show you guys how to do is there are several different equations that the calculators are programmed so that you can um, click and drag them. So you don't have to type in the numbers to transform the equations. You can click and drag it. And so let me just show you really quickly. One of them is just a linear equation. So if you start with your parent function y equals x, you've got this linear equation. And and if I wanted to graph this part of the flower right down here, I would, um, let me move the formula. So I would hover over the line so I get these little curvy arrows. And if you hover over the ends of the line, you'll get the curvy arrows. And what that does is that changes the slope. And you can just hold the center of your mouse pad and just turn it, and it will change the slope of your line. And then once you get it to approximately where you want to go ahead and hover over the middle of the line and you get the double cross and that will change the y intercept. And so what I tell my students is like just practice, see what you can do, see where, see if you can get it to cover wherever we want to cover in this case, this little line on the flower. Okay, and then at this point we talked about the domain and range. And usually by before we start this project, we've talked about domain and range and and um, the kids understand what the concepts, but they really, what I find is they really don't, they're like, okay, domain is all possible X values. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, and once we do this project, I'm like, okay, now we need to limit the domain. And that's where this abstract domain concept becomes very a concrete concept. Okay, and I'll tell them, okay, so we want it to start like right here and we want it to stop right here. And here's the thing, you can, it's easiest to limit the domain, but for several of the equations, you can limit both the domain and the range or one or the other. Um, for the most part tonight, I'm gonna to be just showing you how to limit the domain. And it's not too complex. We pull up your formula and then you push control and then the equal button. And this pulls up your inequalities and the such as line. And usually we've done the, the different domain and range formats, so they understand what the such as line is. And then I say, okay, what's the leftmost value? And in this case, probably 0 0.5. And then we do the control equals again for the less than symbol x, less than, um, let's try a positive 1. Okay, and we just try it, and usually we don't get it exactly where we want it. Sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we don't. In this case, it looks pretty close, 
And at this point, my students are all like, hey, this is cool, but I don't want it to be red, or I want the line to be a little bit thicker, or hey, this formula is in my way, how can I get rid of the formula? So the, all those things, all these things are things that the kids are going to want to know, and they're going to want to know immediately. So very first day of the practicing, I show them how to do this. Uh, to hide the formula, you just highlight it and push delete. It's gone. Notice that the line is still here. I tell my students if they accidentally, um, like if they have the formula highlighted and the line highlighted and they push delete, both of them are going to be gone, and that's where we do talk about the undo button, control Z or control escape. Um, that's something you're going to want to cover very, very quickly in this project. Um, and then another thing is just changing the appearance of our line. So this line, I would like to make it thicker. I would also like to change the color to pink, because if you can see up here, I already have a pink line up here. So my flower, I want to have a pink flower. So menu. Um, actions, attributes will change the appearance of the line, the thickness. You can change how thick it is. You can also change whether it's uh, dotted or dashed. Um, we want it to be solid. And then probably medium thickness. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and so for those of you that don't aren't very familiar with the calculators and you're like, wait, wait, I just like lost you. Don't worry about it. I do have some uh, YouTube videos that I recorded years and years ago that show you all these steps, and the and they are on the Google Drive um, link that I'm going to give you at the end of class. Hey, Ellen. Yes. Um, in the chat window, um, what experience do the students have? with transformations before this project? Somebody was asking about that, if you could maybe touch on that. Like what prior knowledge would they right. have? So that's a good question. So some of my, in years past, I've usually done this project. This is usually like the final project at the end of the year. So they've done transformations quite a bit um, of most of the equations. And I've done this with an Algebra 1 class. Obviously I didn't, when, when I'm doing Algebra 1, I don't, usually have them do a uh, logarithm or exponential or some of the, or like the trig functions. I'll have very basic pictures for them. Um, but I've, de I've done it with an Algebra 1 class, Algebra 2, and pre-calculus, and usually it's at the end of the year. So this year, um, the, the two pictures, the Pokemon pictures that you guys saw, those were done with kids that had never, ever taken even Algebra 1 and really didn't have any experience with transformations. And I totally was not planning on having them do this project, but they, they're they in a project-based learning class and the kids have some say in what projects they do. And some of my older students in the, in the higher level math classes were showing, you know, I had their pictures up on, in the room and my PBL kids said, hey, we wanna do that, can we do it? And I was like, and at first I was like, no, that's going to be way too hard. And then I realized that, you know, if we, if we work on it together, we could totally do this. Um, and then of course, so we get started on it right before spring break and then COVID-19 happens and, and all my kids are at home. And so we worked on it through Zoom and we, you know, we worked on it together. Everybody had their calculator program downloaded on their, or the, the Inspire calculator program on their computers and we just did it on Zoom and it was amazing how these kids that honestly some of my kids cannot add subtract multiply and divide accurately that's how low their math skills are but once I taught them the concepts that this is how to move it left this is how to move it right this is how to move it up and down um, they did it it was amazing and there was a couple times they needed help um, but after a while, they're like, well, I want it to be skinny or, you know, they never use the proper vocabulary, which, you know, it's fine. Um, but so I've done it in both ways where they've had lots of experience and I've also done it where they had zero experience and I was teaching them the transformations as we were working on, through the project. Um, so it, it really just depends on how you want to do it. 
Sorry, did that answer the question adequately? I hope so. Uh, yes, yeah, she hasn't said anything again. Um, so I guess if, if she comments again, I'll ask you some more questions. All right, awesome. Thank you. All right, so the next thing the kids want to do, and they always want to change the color of the lines. As soon as you tell them that they can change the color of the lines, they are very particular on what colors they want their picture to have. Um, and for that, just go to menu, actions, um, and set conditions. And I will tell you with those of you that are really familiar with uh, Inspire, there's always like three or four different ways to do something. And so um, I typically, with my students, I, I teach them one way and then I um, let them, and then I tell them, okay, there's lots of other ways to do this. I want you to see if you can figure out some other ways and then they can do whatever way they want. So if you do a menu action set, con or set conditions, that's changing the line, and we only do the line color. Um, if you click on here, it tells you what number represents each color. So in this case, I wanted pink, so I would put a six there. Um, but one of the things I wanted to point out to you is that uh, when you do this, you can see that you can see a whole bunch of hidden equations that are in there. And I hid these equations from you guys just because um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do everything with you and I wanted to have some stuff there that I can just show you later on. So when you do this, yeah, there's just, it shows you all the hidden stuff. Um, and you can change more than one line at a time by just clicking on it, okay? And then once you're done changing the line, colors of the lines, just push escape to come back out of that, okay? So let's look at, so I just showed you functions that you can click and drag. There are several of them, your quadratic function, your sine function, um, natural log, you can click and drag, and exponential equations with a base of E, you can click and drag. Um, but there's several functions that you have to transform on your own, okay? One of them, and my students hate doing this, but I always tell them they have to do at least two rational equations. Uh, but rational functions, you have to uh, manually transform them on your own. And I have them always start with one over X, and then so they can see what the shape looks like. And let me see, I've already done one and I know the numbers, I'm trying to remember, oh. So um, on this one, there's two sides, and of course we talk about how to limit the domain to get rid of the parts that you don't want. But I found that this part of the flower right here um, looks really good with this portion right here. And usually when I'm practicing with the kids, we'll do, um, we'll do, we'll experiment with it. We'll try something. We'll say, okay, how, you know, we want this, this part here that's at negative one, we want it over at negative three. How do we shift it to the left three units and, or, or two units, I guess. And so we'll talk about the different ways um, the rules on transformations and how to move it up and how to move it to the left and right. Um, I will tell you, um, I don't remember where this equation is, so I'm just going to type it in. It ends up being like x plus 1.7 and then plus 1.4 at the end. Okay, so after experimenting with this a couple times with my students, um, you can see that because they have to do it manually, because they have to guess and check, guess and check, they really start to figure out, okay, if you're adding or subtracting straight to the X, that's moving left and right. And if you're adding or subtracting at the end of the equation, that's moving up and down. So they really get these transformation concepts down solid when they do this project. Um, let's see, I want to hide that equation. All right. Um, I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm going to hide this line too because I'm kind of short on time. And I did want to show you some other things that we can do. Um, hey, Alan, before you yeah. give, get off of the B picture, can you um, show how to make the fill stripe again? I know you showed us how to do the dotted and a larger stripe, but can you show us how to make that big thick stripe or like the eyes? Thank you. Um, the big fill oh, stripe. Thank you. 
Are you saying changing the thickness of the line? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, that's menu, actions, and attributes. And the, so this will be, this will change how thick the line is so you can make it super thin, medium, or thick. Those are the three options. And then you can also change it to dotted and dashed. Um, I had a couple of students that had like rain in their pictures and they loved doing uh, dotted lines. They, they just graphed a couple of lines and made it dotted and it looked like rain. It was really cool. Um, or you could just keep it solid and then just making it thicker. Um, I will tell you, um, it, those of you doing geometry, I do not allow my students to use geometric shapes when they're filling these out because with the geometric shapes, they can, you can fill them in, um, but <clears throat> they don't require any type of formulas or transformations. You just put the shape up there and you click and drag it. Um, what I, if I have students that really want to do, put a geometric shape in that they can feel like the eyes here, then I will tell them to do everything else, get all the requirements done, and then I will show them how to insert a geometric shape and fill it in. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is how to do kind of a compound um, limit on your domain or your range. So here's our exponential equation and I it has two parts if you see it it starts here goes up and then it has this break and it goes and then it keeps on going and so when you put your limit in um, you just put your limit in for one section then do a space and then the word or space and then the other section so you can you can do compound limits on these equations um, Another thing I wanted to show you is your conic functions. Most of you, hopefully, if you are teaching students about conics, you know how to get to the conic equation templates. Um, it's menu, graph, uh, equation templates. And you can do uh, lin uh, lines, parabolas, circles, uh, ellipses, all these. Um, I love these types of functions, even my, um, I show my lower level learners how to do this. My kids in Algebra 1 um, use conics because they're so easy to work with and because they make great eyes, they make great smiles, they make ears, you know, you name it, there's so much stuff that they can do, okay? But I, one thing I do tell my students is that like this is, this is their, the circle on the bee's head, it's perfect, right? But if you want to do something like the circle here on the flower, where you would want to have a limit there, let me see where my circle, can you remember? Yep. So here you would want to limit it, right? Um, on your equations, you cannot limit the equation when it's in the equation form. So I have them do, set it up as an equation. Then I'll have them highlight the equation and I'll have them copy it. And then they just click on this line to hide the, the equation template. And then I have them go in and graph it as a relation. And I have them do control V to paste it. And then we get um, an equation. Then we can limit the, the conics. Okay. So for your equations themselves, you have to have the kids graph it for, first as an equation, copy and paste it as a relationship, and then you can limit on the equation. And then if you see here, you notice I limited the range instead of the domain. Um, and here are several more that I want to put up. Let's see, where is this one? Uh, let me go ahead and turn these ones on. And you can even do compounds. There we go. All right, so these are just, like this is a hyperbola here. And I always love the word hyperbola because the first time I tell my students about it, they're always like, no, I think it, you're mispronouncing that. My English teacher says it's hyperbole. Anyway, I have a lot of fun with hyperbolas. All right, and here's this one. I did a compound hyperbola. Um, I did a compound. Um, 
limit on the domain. I limited both the X value and the Y value. <clears throat> you can totally do that. The kids get really involved in these types of pictures. They have a lot of fun with them. Um, is there any type of function you guys want me to show you before I move on? I know, um, you know, I do want to show you one where it, it has a B value, um, but is there any requests? Oh, fill in the stripes on the bumblebee. Um, so you cannot fill in unless it's a geometric shape. And so a lot of times what I'll tell my students is they can graph a line or graph a shape and then shift it up and graph it again and shift it up and graph it again. And so that really, I know they look at me like it's going to take forever and it takes them five minutes. Um, because they figure out that you know they they want to keep the same curvature and they're just moving the formula up just a little, little bit. And that's one way I've had them fill in the this stripe on the line, or I just tell them to do like the border and don't worry about the inside. Okay. Um, hey, Ellen. Somebody asked, um, could you maybe do? And an inequality to fill the inside of that B? Hmm. You know, I've never, I've never tried it. That would be interesting. Huh. I don't know how you would do it for, for linear or for uh, conic functions. I do, I have done um, sine functions and done it as an inequality. Uh, one of my students did, Wanted, was graphing a fish and he wanted water. So I showed him how to graph a inequality with that. Um, let me see why is less than. Do a trig function really quickly. And yeah, so like something like this where you, uh, you know, if this was a fish, it would be appropriate. It's not really appropriate for for a, a, a flower and a bee, but it's okay. You guys understand the concept. So yes, you can do um, inequalities to do that. And um, one thing I will tell you is if you're doing, like if you want to have it in a specific, specific spot, graph it first as an equation and then change it into an inequality. So it graphs under it or above it or whatever. Um, so like this one, I cannot just click and drag the sine function because it's an inequality. Um, but if I graph it as a function first, you know, then I, I absolutely love this. I can make the waves bigger. I can make them farther apart. I can make them super tiny. You know, there's really... There's so much stuff you can do with this. You can also change where the sinusoidal line is. Um, so if you hover over this kind of the sinusoidal, the location of the sinusoidal line where you have the double cross, that's going to change that location. So you can move up, down, left, and right. Um, if you hover over the minimums or maximums, that's when you're changing the curve, you know, the wave itself. I'm going to see if I can graph this flower right there. There we go. So as you can see, like I, I totally did this one from scratch. Um, but the reason why I wanted to do this one is to show you your B value. And with, with the stretching and, or stretching and compressing horizontally and vertically, uh, with your side function, anytime you have a B value, if it's one of the equations where you can click and drag, you're going to have um, the B value is distributed into the X and the C value. Um, so I always teach my students to factor out that equation. And so, you know, when they were in algebra one, they had to learn how to factor things out. They probably thought, oh, I'm never going to use this. Well, and then they get into pre-calculus and we're like, okay, you need to factor that out to see what your C value is. Um, 
because there will be some times where they'll have like the C value is 302. And I'm like, okay, that's not it. That's not the right C value. You need to factor out your B to figure out what the correct C value is. So there's all sorts of math concepts that, you know, they probably already learned somewhere, but they thought, oh, I'm never going to see that again, that you can bring back in to this, this project and really get a lot of these math concepts down, um, you know, cemented into their brain. Uh, factory, not the B. Okay. Um, let me, oh, wow, time is flying. All right, so is there any other questions you guys want me to walk you through before we move on? All right, let's go ahead and I want to show you, um, like this is just some of the equations I was playing with the other night on um, lots of, some of them you'll have like, it'll look like it's one solid equation, but like when you start hovering over it, you'll have two or three different equations and that's just because of the limits um, and just trying to get everything to fit smoothly. And then one of the things that I have my students do is that after they've done their project and they think they're good, I have them uh, hide the grid lines. And to do that, menu, view, grid, line, grid. And I, grid, and then, or no grid. So I have them hide the grid lines. And then I also have them hide the axes. And that just helps the picture look a little bit nicer. And so you can really, um, there's not as much background noise in the picture, okay? And then they will typically send me their file and then I'll take off the picture and I'll send the file back to them and, and then they're like, because there's a lot of times that they think, oh, I'm like 90% done and then I take the picture off and then they're like, oh, wait, I'm not 90% done. Like once I take that picture off, you can really see there's a lot that needs to be done on this project. Um, and so I typically, one or two days before the due date, I say, okay, send me your file. I want to take the picture off, let you see what, what you have without the background, and then you can fix anything that you need to fix. Okay? That's one of the things that I do. And as you can see, you know, it doesn't look anything like this did, but you can still see that you know, if somebody had this project, I could tell that they put forth some effort, probably not an A project, maybe a, a C or D, depending on their skill level. Um, but I could definitely see that somebody took some time and was learning their transformations with that. Another thing I want to show you is how to set up your own picture program. So I, in my Google Docs file, I have probably about four or 500 different pictures, but I'm always looking for more. And the reason why is because my, I, I try to have pictures that my students are interested in looking at. And so I frequently will add more pictures. So to set up the program, it's super easy. You get your graphing screen, you turn on your grid line to you, um, and I just use a standard window on this. Go to insert, Image, and this is something you can only do on the computer program. You cannot do this on a handheld. Um, and then I have found a picture that I wanted to uh, graph, and then I put that picture on there. This is me at a um, T3 conference. I think this was in Chicago several years ago. No, or Baltimore, I can't remember which one, anyway. So you can just insert a picture, and it's really cool. Yes, it's Pi Day. Um, but I, one thing I have found is that it doesn't matter what size my picture is, I always want to adjust it after I insert it. So if you right-click on your mouse, select your image, then you can move it. And so if my picture is super busy, I might only want my students to graph a portion of it. So I might have a focus on my head. Uh, and so you just make it bigger, and then you move it, okay? Pretty easy, so now they get to focus on my beautiful 
face, making a weird face with my mouth. Anyway, um, so you can really uh, focus on whatever you want to focus on. If I wanted to focus on the pi symbol, I can move it up, just whatever, you know. Um, so really, and one of the things that I've done in the past is I've contacted the art teacher in our, on my campus and I said, hey, you know, we're going to do this project. Can your art students um, do some sketches for me? Or do you have any sketches that I can use? And so then, you know, it's, it's always really cool having students that are artists in my classroom that submitted something to their teacher and then they come into math class and they see their picture on a calculator file and they're like, wait a second, there's no way we can do art and math at the same time. So um, that's always fun to do like your school mascot or just whatever artwork the kids have done. Um, Take a picture of it, throw it on the graphene screen. It's great. All right, uh, let's see. So creating your own picture. One of the things that I will tell you after I do a picture on here, I change the name and then I take a screenshot of it so that um, I have a, a picture of it and the calculator file. And usually I will print off the picture so my students have a hard copy of the picture. And, and I tell my students, you can doodle on this, draw lines on the paper copy where you think you want your lines to be. And so it's basically, it's their rough draft of their graph. Okay. All right, uh, let me see. Transformation paperwork. That I did want to show you that. Um, for my PBL students, I walk them through filling out the transformation paperwork with a couple of the equations, and then I have them do their own. And as you can see, I, it's, it's some pretty in-depth paperwork. And initially, my students are like, what do all those abbreviations mean? I have all the abbreviations up here, and if you guys, um, want to use different terminologies, go for it. it. They're all Excel. You can edit it to fit your needs. Um, if you don't want them to use the absolute value graphs or functions, then take it off. Okay. And then I just have them go through vertical shifting, compressing, uh, reflecting horizontally and vertically, shifting it left to right, shifting it up and down. And as you can see, there's a lot of them that you don't have a B value. I did include a B value on the square root. However, um, most of my students are not going to have a B value on their square root. They just don't. Um, so most of them, I just have them cross it out. Um, the rationals, exponents. Oh, for exponential logarithm functions, I always have them write down your their base number and then a horizontal stretching or compressing if they have one and then reflecting if they have one is those as well. If you um, I think I do want to show you the, the equation that I have for exponential. Let me see. Yeah, so this exponential equation, um, the exponential one, if it's again, if it's the base of E, you can um, click and drag it, and so my students love using uh, exponential functions with a base of E. They don't like doing exponential functions with other base numbers, but I, depending on the level of the class, like my pre-cal students, I will tell them, okay, you have to have at least one that has a different base number, so they have to do the transformations on their own. Um, and so that's one of them. And same thing, the B value, the calculator, does not factor out the B value from the X minus C. Um, it's distributed, so you just remind them to factor that out. And the kids get it. It's amazing. Some of the concepts that they really struggled with when it was just a worksheet and textbook problems, they, they really don't understand the concepts. But when you're doing it um, with this type of project, for some reason, they get the concept of factoring out that B value. Um, now, with logarithm, if you're using uh, natural log, um, that's another one you can click and drag. If you do base 10, base 2, whatever, 
you have to do the tr manual transformation. Uh, linear functions, I just have them do the, the slope and the y-intercept. And then I have conic functions. So again, you guys can totally feel free to use the paperwork the way you want it. It's totally up to you. Um, let me see. Let me pull up my PowerPoint again for the um, here is the URL number or the um, URL. This is the link to all my files, all the paperwork, the calculator files, the pictures of the of the calculator files, all of that. Feel free to um, use what you want, download it, make it your own, have a lot of fun with it. Any questions? So right now would be a great time if you have any uh, last minute questions or comments or concerns for Ellen um, about her fun, fantastic project for students. Um, that would be a great time to ask them. I did put a link to the documents in the chat window. Um, you'll also get an email in a couple of days with the link to the documents as well. Um, and Ellen is so graciously going to share all that information with us. Well, mm -hmm. I feel like I have just been talking nonstop. It is very different. I have to tell you guys, when you're a virtual presentation, there's no back and forth. Like, I had no idea what you guys are saying about me. You're welcome. So I did notice, I have to do a shout out for Colleen, Texas. I worked in Colleen, or I lived in Colleen, Texas for 20 years and worked at Ellison High School for five years. Um, and there was an attendee from Colleen High School. The small world, isn't it? All right, thank you so much, Ellen. Um, what I would like to show you guys is what we were talking about earlier about free software. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So because of the entire um, school system going to online learning, and um, needing calculators and support, uh, Texas Instruments has made it available to have the teacher software, student software, emulator screens, um, smart view, uh, a Chromebook extension for the TI-84, all free um, right now, as well as a, an iPad app. Um, so I did post it in the link, the link in the chat window earlier. It is education.ti.com. And if you go to that website, um, it actually shows you how you can download these resources. Um, the, what Ellen was using earlier is the TI Inspire teacher software. That's how she was able to do um, a lot of the manipulations at ease. Can be shown in a projection type, maybe a Zoom or a Google Hangout meeting with your students. Um, there's also student software that the students could download. Um, like I mentioned, there is an iPad app. Um, the iPad app um, came out several years ago, but has recently um, gotten uh, hype for it because it's user friendly, allows you to do some of the same functions like the calculator, um, and, a lot, and a lot of students have um, iPads. There is a Chromebook notebook computer solution as well. Um, it's for the 84 version of the calculator. If you're interested in that, there is a form for you to fill out. Um, and then the um, powers that be at TI will send you information um, to uh, put it onto the students' Chromebooks or send it out to the students. I know that in my district, um, in order for us to have it on our Chromebooks, we had to contact somebody at the technology office, but it is there for you. Um, what you guys are here for is the virtual uh, TQ International Conference, and we thank you guys for joining us tonight. If you are interested in more professional development, there are other webinars. Um, what you are watching is what's called um, a live webinar, and there is a link for all of the live webinars. These are professional development webinars 
um, shared with you just like what Ellen was sharing with you with different um, TI instructors to share their information. If for some reason you're not able to do the live webinars, you can always go to the archive, which is the on-demand webinars, which you can actually search for the different technology that you might be interested in. Um, so if you want to know more about the apps for the iPad, which is something I'm putting in my professional growth plan for next year, um, these are the webinars that have been done so far um, for the, this type of technology. You can search for your topic um, and you can search for your subject area. Um, people ask me all the time, Stacey, how did you get started with TI? This is how I got started. I watched webinars after webinars after webinars. Another thing that has um, been released that you might be interested in is the summer workshops. And because of COVID-19 and distance learning and social distancing, um, TI actually has several virtual webinars, I'm sorry, virtual workshops this summer. Um, and these workshops can be seen a variety of different technologies, TI-84, um, as well as the Inspire. Some are centered around the ACT, some are centered around the SAT tests, um, some are centered around specifics for like Texas. Um, learning to code, not just with um, programming, um, with mathematical equations, um, but also maybe with using um, things like the Innovator Hub or the Rover. Um, so definitely want to check out the summer workshops. One thing that Ellen mentioned was that she created these documents. If you are trying to learn how to use these documents and maybe you're not ready to start trying uh, creating your own documents, TI does have um, basically a vault of classroom activities that are tried and true by uh, TI instructors as well as classroom teachers that have created activities that are designed that are standards-based, content-based, um, technology-based. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple. So Math Inspired obviously is specifically for mathematics. It is um, broken up into the variety of content. So I'll just pick Algebra 1. Um, and then the different topics that would be under Algebra 1. Let's say I want to look up linear functions. And under linear functions, these are the teacher-made activities that can help you teach concepts um, if you're trying to start with different activities for TI Inspire. So I'm just going to click on the first one, points on the line. It gives you some objectives, kind of gives you some background vocabulary words that either maybe your students need to know or you need to make sure you cover. Um, gives you some information about the lesson. And my favorite part is the downloadable files. Once you download these files, these are yours. You can edit them. Um, you can change them. Maybe you need to put your name on them. Maybe there's more information on it and you want it to be a two-day um, activity instead of a one-day. So there are teacher notes. Um, with the teacher notes come technology tips to try to help you use the technology that is most advantageous for that activity as well as what would be best for the student learning. There are both student activity docs that are editable as well as a PDF. Um, so when I first started using TI technology, this is where I went. I would see what TI had for the different activities. I would download and then I would um, use those activities when teaching my lessons. And then what Ellen had is, open on the Inspire software is called a TNS file, TI Inspire file. And so the download actually gives you that file. And just like what you saw, there's pages, there's um, sometimes there's questions embedded, sometimes there's simulations, um, and you were completely um, allowed to make edits to this based on the needs of your students. So those are just some of the areas I wanted to show you. Um, that are really, um, I guess, useful if you're starting to learn the TI technology, you're trying to figure out how to put it into your classroom, you want to have some fun um, during the summer while you're on break.
So we are ending tonight's webinar. Make sure if you have any questions or comments, um, Ellen did provide her email address in the chat window. Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, you can feel free to email her specifically. I had posted the link for your certificate of attendance. I just posted it again, as well as link to the documents that Ellen is graciously providing us. If you liked tonight and you want to share with us or with others um, about it, we are on all social media. Um, it's uh, hashtag TI calculators or hashtag T3 learns. Those are great ways to get in touch with others to continue um, having professional development, sharing what you've learned. And the certificate of attendance can be downloaded. You can type your name in and um, some schools may need it for your professional learning um, or CLUs. Um, I keep a little list next to my desk of all of the different TI webinars that I've attended. Um, right after this session, you will receive a survey. And this survey is completely anonymous. Um, the professional development team at TI really uses this to judge where we need to go with professional development, um, what areas, what topics, and this will do nothing but um, help pr prepare uh, the PD team for creating new and exciting programs like Ellen shared with us tonight. So if you could please complete that when um, the webinar is uh, finished. Also, if for some reason you should need some support after the webinar is finished, as far as the technology, um, TI Cares is the customer support and tech reps, 1-800-TI-CARES, or if you have technical questions and you would like to email, ti-cares at ti.com. These guys listen to us, um, and I say us as classroom teachers. Um, they are more than helpful in, in troubleshooting what kind of problems you have. Um, they will walk you through all of the processes that may be to get you on the right path. So please check them out if you should need something. Um, thank you, Ellen, so much for your sharing this cool activity with us. Um, I am definitely going to share this with my math teachers at school. Um, we teach a, a dual enrolled um, junior level math class, and there's always a break before the sem when the semester ends before the next semester. And my teacher is always looking for stuff, and this is going to be the best project for them. Um, and I loved seeing your student work. So thank you so much for sharing with us tonight, Ellen. Awesome. Thank you guys for attending. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I love this project. And thank you all for being with us tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. And we'll see you um, soon. Thank you.